everyone, my name is Lindsay with The Culture Project. We're here at SEEK 2019 and I'm with the incredible Jason Everett. Jason, thank you so much for your time. So good to be chatting with you. Wanted to ask you a few questions. Um, as missionaries spreading the virtue of chastity, we just wanted to ask you, there's so many young people, young Catholics living out their faith. How would you recommend them to continue to grow in virtue, not to become lukewarm or to continue to challenge themselves, particularly in this area of chastity? Yeah, one is is you, you got to be surrounded by like-minded people. You got to search them out. And so don't say, well, my friends aren't into it. Find new friends. Yeah, and people say, oh, well, it's easier said than done. But yeah, but it needs to be done. And so whether it's life teen, campus ministry, youth group focus, you got to get plugged into the right people. Because if you don't, you always feel like you're the odd man out. But then you also start to judge yourself by what your friends are doing, which is worse. And you think, yeah, I might be doing this with my girlfriend, but it's not what he's doing with his girlfriend. But that's not the standard. You know, the world has never been the standard. You know, when you have got godly friends, then you realize like, wow, I, I really need to grow in this area and I, and I need to work on this and work on that. You know, a buddy of mine says friends are like elevators. They either take you up or they take you down. And so the question is, what kind of elevator are you on? And so you got to find good friends because you always become like your friends. Awesome. I agree with you. I feel like I started to grow in the virtue of chastity when I was surrounded by community. Mm -hmm. Community challenged me, showed me things that I didn't even see in myself. Uh, I feel like it's just an excellent thing to have those friends around you. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone who really wants to embrace this lifestyle but feels like they are they're feeling the guilt of their past or can't forgive themselves? Yeah, you don't want to let the past determine your future because you're not the sum of your wounds and your failures because that's giving the, the past and that person perhaps a lot too much control over you. I remember in the news a couple years ago three young women had been abducted by a sex offender and lived in torture in his basement for years in Ohio and they finally escaped and the man was sent to prison and I saw one of the women in a press release after she escaped and she said you know what I will not be defined by my situation I will define my situation and this woman who would suffered years of torture in this pervert's basement it says you know my past will not determine my future the man has exerted enough power over me but he will not have the power over the rest of the years of my life and so only she had the power to end his hatred and so if you've made mistakes don't be the one to hate yourself and think that you're worthless or you're worth any less because of what you've done or what's happened to you but to get up and not live out of those wounds because people think oh everybody calls me a slut I guess I just am I might as well be one it's like no don't give them power over you you know God's got a plan for your life and if he's calling you to marriage start being faithful to your spouse before you even meet that person because it doesn't matter where you've been or what's happened to you all that matters is where you want to go from here amen amen it's always a new day and chastity is always about the present moment yep. never about the past yep. thank you uh, last question for you I'm sure you encounter so many people, maybe uh, young adults who really are inspired by your ministry and want to do what you do. What would be your advice to them? Duh, join the Culture Project. Okay, I mean, that's a kind of a no-brainer. No, I mean, my ministry is one thing. You know, we're writing books and, you know, publishing and out and speaking. Culture Project is a ministry that I've always known is needed to exist, but God wasn't calling me to do it. And I knew it had to happen. I just wondered, who's going to do this thing? Who's going to form these missionaries and send them out because like I'm one person there's what like 19 million high school students in America at any given time and a whole new batch circulates every four years who's gonna go out you know and God is calling people to become missionaries and you don't have to be some seasoned veteran of given 20 years of chastity talks you know maybe you've helped out at your youth group for a couple years and you know how to do a skit you know how to stand in front of 15 kids or maybe speaking isn't your gig or but maybe you're good with crayons or like you can do something good for the kingdom. And and so get in touch with Culture Project. Not just the girls, the guys. We need men. We need men in front of these men. And so discern, God, is this what you're asking me to call? To give a year of my life or two or whatever to serve you? And if so, you never know who lives can be changed. I mean, think about my marriage and my seven children. My wife heard one obscure chastity speaker guy who none of us's name would ever recognize and I've never met. And because of his one talk, my wife had her conversion. She changed her life. We met. We got married. We have seven kids in this ministry because of some random chastity talk to a small group of kids somewhere in Colorado like 20 years ago. And so you never know whose life you could change. Excellent. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your yes. Thank you for inspiring so many of us. And it's a pleasure to do ministry, chastity ministry alongside.
idea. Keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you. Good to meet you. God bless.